Dear friends, it's a pleasure to be here, and I thanks again Laurie and Kobe for the kind invitation. Um, so focal therapy goes between active surveillance and uh, whole gland treatment. And uh, the objective of focal therapy is to uh, uh, be a minimally invasive surgery to preserve the functions, continence and potency, and to be reversible. I mean, allowing for radical treatment in case of failure without, with the same good functional results as it, if it had been uh, performed as a primary treatment. So, 20 years from now, challenge I hope will be overcome. Uh, accuracy in the pretreatment detection, localization, and staging, thanks to functional MRI or, let's say, the next uh, generation of PET. Um, there will be some uh, good efficiency for the focal therapy modalities we are evaluating. Um, the surveillance criteria will be established for untreated prostate, whether it is a whole gland or part of the gland in case of focal therapy. Um, multifocality would not be a problem. It will be only a risk of recurrence and will go for retreatment decision. Then patient selection, this is the uh, most difficult part to foresee, but it will be um, mainly for significant cancers only, and significance is still um, not very accurate. The current situation is not good with the 12 extended systematic posterior biopsies. And so we know that we have data to show that modern imaging and or template perennial biopsy have the potential for improving diagnosis and better select patients for any kind of, of treatment. Um, so why focal therapy would be the first choice modality of screen detected cancer uh, in the future? Uh, because concept is validated, um, uh, well, breast cancer, kidney cancer, they faced the same challenges. And uh, you know that the function should be preserved with uh, prostate treatment are very important. And uh, Mark Soloway uh, emphasized this ED uh, problem. Uh, the secondary 3 plus 3 microfocal cancers are not, will not be anymore a cancer. And they do not necessitate treatment. Uh, modern imaging is accurate. Uh, focal therapy at that time would have been widely evaluated, I hope, with long-term results. And it would be more and more asked by patients, that's natural. And it will be put in front by journals. Do you remember the, the buzz about this last uh, IFU Lancet article by Ash Ahmed, which overcome the buzz from the uh, preventive task force recommendation. So this is a very attractive uh, modality. Um, so I'll go through uh, quickly through some facts. Uh, multifocality of risk and risk of recurrence were recently assessed on the unbiased series of prostates. And what we think is that in this histoprostatectomy series, this, all these small cancer were representative of secondary cancer of radical prostatectomy specimens. One, one thing is that between, uh, within the low volume cancer, 90% were below 0.5, four had some glisten, four or five. So these are the, the one we should pick up and treat uh, whether they are uh, low volume. Okay, you see on this uh, schematic view, these are all the, the small cancer less than 0.5 cc in this unbiased series. 75% are from PZ, uh, 25 from TZ. Uh, you see that they are scattered all over the uh, three thirds of the prostate on the right. And they are at the end of the ACNI as uh, it is known. But let's say that, look, look at this, these 20% um, of cancer foci were less than six millimeters from the apical limit. And half of these apical cancer were 
uh, anterior, as you see there, or on this lower third part. So this could be a uh, limitation for focal therapy. Currently, no one showed that any modality could be effective at this uh, apical part of the prostate without you know, damaging the sphincter. And uh, I mean, trying to, um, we are not sure that it could preserve the sphincter function in case of radical treatment in the, in the future. And so there are, these are all the location and the, uh, the shape of this um, uh, cancer in autopsy series. Uh, cancer multifocality, we know that this multif multifocality averages 60% of, of our cases, and in, it's bilateral in more than 80%. Um, this one, this patient would have negative biopsy series if you do extended 12 cores, and uh, he will be happy with having no cancer, but you, see, you know that they might be, uh, in 40% of them, a small one. So bilaterality showed that it's not necessary to treat the entire lobe if you want to destroy this significant cancer, because in more than 80% of the cases, the secondary cancer would be contralateral. So MRI is accurate for cancer identification. These are the traditionally assessed parameters, size, I mean, translation between volume and, and, and uh, length, diameter, and Gleason grades. And I fully support what Dr. Strigley showed that say that person of cancer, of, uh, person of grade four or five, might be the best, the most accurate parameter. So we have evidence that MRI is accurate for cancer identification with good sensitivity and specificity for volume above 0.5 cc. Um, these are some of what images you can have with current uh, MRI. You know, these were based on 1.5 Tesla, so it's still a good a way to, um, to see the cancer with some discrete suspicious error which were proven to be cancer at biopsy. So these peripheral zone cancer might be good candidates for focal therapy and uh, it's not exactly the same for these anterior cancers. You know this small one? Uh, at the anterior part of the uh, right TZ, and this one almost within AFMS. These are challenging areas for focal therapy, and there are no good modalities validated for this location up to now. One and uh, one example to show you that um, uh, this is a case where if you look at it, you, you will see that there is a suspicious area at the right part, right lobe, at the anterior horn of peripheral zone on diffusion uh, T2 and enhanced uh, sequences. But you, one should look very closely because in this case there were a second cancer. You see that on the radical prostatectomy specimen. So this one was identified and this one was not. It was not and actually it's seen now retrospectively on MRI but it was not mentioned. And the, the malignant gland density explained that this one might not have been uh, identified before. So, be, you know, uh, uh, speaking about index versus non-index cancer is not very a good way and should be, we should look for all the significant cancers and all the secondary non-insignificant cancers. Then, um, Focal therapy modalities, uh, this nice review showed that there are many ongoing focal therapy trials. Uh, we should wait for longer follow-up. Uh, uh, it could be cryo, IFU, or laser, and I'll leave the next speakers to get into more details. Uh, there is a phase three a VTP to CAD trial with combining laser and photosensitizers. Uh, this uh, laser intertitial inter thermal therapy, uh, which were very well also uh, uh, evaluated in a phase two study by Lindner with very nice uh, tissue effect. A key point that focal therapy study need to define, they are listed here. Patient selection is still a challenge. And I would say that D'Amico's group 
with PSA, T stage, and grade are not designed for patient selections for focal therapy. And um, best parameter would include tumor size, percent of grade four, five, and this will uh, relate to significance. Um, then location contours for feasibility. And this would be the good parameters, and the next meeting, the next focal therapy meeting, should address these parameters for focal therapy selection. Thank you for your attention.